Hello everybody, it is day 26 and the last video in the Universal Law video series. I am Victoria from creativehealingandwellness.com and become your best self and transform your life. Um, today, the last two laws are the law of polarity and the law of reflection. And these are pretty quick, simple, easy ones, so that's why I'm throwing them into one video. Um, so we're going to start with the law of polarity. Now this, in, in the seven essential laws that I teach, this is the final law. This, the law of reflection is the bonus law, um, but it's a really important law too. So like I said, there's lots of different laws out there. <laughs> But the law of polarity states that unity is the plural at a minimum of two. Kind of an odd definition. But in the duality that exists, there are two poles or opposites of everything. Now, I talked about this a little bit yesterday, you know, with the dark and the light. Um, that is the an example of polarity. You have hot and cold. You have uh, soft and hard. Um, you have, uh, you know, different extremes. Okay? So now the law of polarity is the ability to... Sorry. What is important in understanding the law of polarity is the ability to understand the power of transformation by choosing, there's that word again, by choosing to change your perception and your resulting attitude, you can shift your perception of someone or something from say bad to good. This becomes your new reality. By seeking a higher frequency vibration of energy in this transformational process, the previous lower frequency of vibration of energy gets replaced. So bad can become good. As an example. So you can raise your vibrations and positively change others. It is up to you to make the choice to change your perception and your attitude towards something or someone. Just as it is up to you to create the life you desire. So it's all about choice here and all about perception. <laughs> and I know you've heard me talk about all of this stuff <laughs> before. This is kind of, these next two laws are going to sum things up. So there's another example, and this is a really important example of the law of polarity, and that is the physical and the metaphysical. Now, I work in both worlds, um, and you know, but but a lot of people are either in one or the other. Most people are just in the physical world. So, the physical is that which is visible, and that which can we can see, hear, touch, smell, and taste. The metaphysical is that which we feel such as emotions, feelings, and energy. In order for you to create what you desire, you have to have both the physical and the metaphysical. The physical part of us needs to take action to make things happen, while the metaphysical part of us needs to do the energy work. It's when we combine the two, okay, these polar opposites, that we create what we truly desire. Now here is, you know, there's a lot of, like, a, like I mentioned when we talked about the law of attraction, there's a lot of people who don't really believe in it or they've tried it and it's just not working for them. Well, <laughs> it's because they're not using both the physical and the metaphysical. And, you know, that book, The Secret, that everybody's all into, um, you know, you get into it, it gives you these feel-good vibes, it's great, and I love the book. I have the book, I have the movie, 
it's a great movie and a lot of the people that are on there are mentors of mine um, but you come away feeling that it's just positive vibes just positive vibes you know think positively think positively think what you want and it's gonna happen but that's not necessarily the case you have to have that metaphysical part the meditative part the energy part involved you have to feel that you already have the things that you desire if you want a car you have to feel like you already have the car and you're driving it around I could tell you my husband this is pretty cool because he uh he wanted a, a Toyota Prius he wanted a blue Toyota Prius and at the time he was driving a um a burgundy Subaru it's a great little car but what he started to do is he started to picture himself driving the Prius. His Subaru was no longer a Subaru in his mind. It was a Prius. And then literally within a couple weeks of doing this, first he started seeing blue Priuses everywhere. <laughs> you know, just like everywhere. He went from never seeing one to seeing them everywhere. And then within two weeks, he came home with a Prius and everything aligned to the point where he could afford it it was the same it wasn't gonna be much different payment wise than the the Subaru and he got his car and it's because he felt like he was already in the car he felt like he already owned it and that's really cool that's kind of what the whole concept of that feeling you know putting yourself in that place if you want your dream house well you have to feel like you already live there you have to picture yourself you know making coffee and making lunch and all this stuff and really get that vibes you know of being in that house so you have to have the energy work and the feeling work with the physical work as well so you have to have both and a, and a lot of people who are who have uh, been introduced to the law of attraction they're only using one or the other you have to use both so another word so another thing about the law of polarity is it is a spectrum of possibilities okay ranging from the positive to the negative and any number of points in between by developing the understanding and learning to fully accept and surrender to whatever may show up in your life, you will have made an incredible progress in your given ability to mold, shape, and achieve a life experience that you consciously desire to experience. Okay? So, you know, you need to have this understanding. And you have to fully accept you know if there's gonna be steps involved you know you may you know be trying to get your dream house and let's say your dream house well we use my dream house for example my dream house is 8500 square feet it's on 10 acres it's a beautiful Tudor style home it's gorgeous um, and you know, it, it, it's really what I ultimately want, something of that. I mean, maybe more property would be good, but that house, that when I look at the pictures of the house, it feels like a home to me. But 8,500 square feet, 8,400 square feet, that's a lot of house. <laughs> that's a lot of house. I barely have 1,100 right now. So there may be a step in between that will kind of propel me towards that house um because if i was to have a house that big i'd have to have staff i'd have to have somebody come into my house once a week to clean it for me because i couldn't keep up with that house <laughs> but so i have to understand and accept that there may be steps in between so regardless of the what life experience you may have in your reality right now you possess the potential just like we were talking with law of um, pure potentiality as well as the ability to experience harmony and fulfillment in each and every area of your life 
The law, uh, the law of polarity can teach us that within every perceived problem, there exists a solution. With every perceived failure lies its success. So, that's kind of hard to get around your head. <laughs> and this is where the whole, my, my whole coining the phrase obstacles of growth comes in. Um, because when you hit a brick wall, or you hit an obstacle, that is a stepping stone. That is how, that is where you learn your lesson. That is how you, because there's no such thing as failure. I mean, a failure is just a lesson. You know, if something didn't work out, okay. So you have more information and now you can move on to something that may work out. There's no failure involved. You're, it's just a step. So, the law of polarity, failure, success. Okay? But, there's really none of this stuff. It's just degrees of success. Does that make sense? <laughs> Something to keep in mind. <laughs> Something to keep in mind. So, there's always a solution. When you have a problem, there's always a solution always and you know every time something doesn't work out you gain more information and that more information will make you move faster towards your next goal but it's all about how you look at it it's all about how you look at it so how do we experience the and apply the law of polarity to attract what we want well, there's three little things here. The first thing is learn to accept whatever you may be currently experiencing. You have to accept, you have to let reality be. You just have to let reality be, okay? When you accept everything as it is, you are in, you are in the polar opposite of resistance. It's really important. So acceptance, resistance, those are polar opposites. You don't wanna be in this resistance, you wanna be in the acceptance thing. So number two, observe the contrast only to get clarity on what you do want. So there is, um, I, I take my clients through this. It's a great little exercise. And if anybody's interested in learning more, just comment below, um, private message me, and uh, we can set up a session and, and uh, I can teach you more. But there's a process called contrast through or clarity through contrast. And you first you have to figure out what you don't want. Because when you figure out what you don't want, you have a clear picture of what you do want. And that's really important to observe the contrast, the what you don't want, in order to get clear. And I've mentioned many times that you have to have clarity in order to manifest, in order to you know, efficiently use these laws. Clarity is important. Knowing what you want is really good. And contrast gives you that opportunity. Now, number three, like all the universal laws, you cannot change the fact that the law of polarity exists. It always has and always will continue to exist. You can't control, deceive, or run away from it. <laughs> So, yeah, that's number three. So, you know, you have to. I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of common sense thing. Can you really? Can you, if you, uh, you know, put, let's just say, uh, you know, light and dark. Okay, you can't run away from the light, and you can't run away from the dark because they're always going to be there. You cannot change that. You cannot change the fact. You just can't like snap your fingers and say everything's going to be soft from now on because you're going to have hard things, <laughs> you know. You can't snap your fingers and say everything's going to be cold now because you're going to have the hot and vice versa. So it exists. You cannot change that. So that's, uh, you know, all of these laws. I mean, they were put here well, well before we are. The, when the universe was created, these laws were created. So... Um, this isn't something that man created. This is, this is physical law. This is uh, supported by quantum physics. So it's really important to, to kind of, you know, realize that. 
So let's see. All right, so we're gonna move on to the last law. This is the bonus law. And this is the law of reflection. And this is a really cool law. Sometimes it can be hard to take though. The law of reflection says that the traits you respond to in others, you recognize in yourself, both positive and negative. I'm gonna read that again. The law of reflection says that the traits you respond to in others, you recognize in yourself, both positive and negative. Everything in the universe is a mirror reflection of you. And I've talked about being in a mirror society, okay? All relationships are a reflection of the relationship within you. That can be people, that can be money, that can be um, career, that could be anything, okay? So, you know, if you have insecurities, then you are insecure with yourself. So this law can be demonstrated four different ways. The first way is that which you admire in others, you recognize as existing within yourself. When you notice wonderful qualities in another person, it's because you too have those qualities. That's a pretty cool, that is a pretty cool feeling. That's a really, so anybody you admire, you have the same traits within you. That's a pretty cool thing. The second thing is the law of reflection is demonstrated by that which you resist and react to strongly in others is sure to be found within yourself. Okay, this is where it gets tough. Because if somebody rubs you the wrong way because they behave a certain way, guess what? You have that same trait. There's no way around it. You have that same trait. We tend to react and respond to things that we see in other people. They're not always gonna be obvious. Actually, most often they are not obvious. This is on an energetic level. And that's hard to, that's hard to kind of grasp. So the people that you hate the most because of certain traits and behaviors, well, you have the same ones in you. Okay. The third is that the law of reflection is expressed in that which you resist and react to in others as something you are afraid exists within you. So there's another twist on it. We can get, you know, fear is a big thing. Like I was saying, I think it was yesterday. You know, there's only two things that exist, fear and love. And fear is huge. Fear literally controls our life. And I talk about it a lot. And I talk about it matter-of-factly and talk about, well, oh, it's your choice, it's your choice. But it's not easy. Fear is really difficult to release. And sometimes when we look at another person and their behavior and their negative behavior, we are afraid that we have that part within ourselves. And so we resist against the other person when ultimately we're resisting against ourselves. It's pretty, it's kind of crazy. It's just scary. It's scary. Now the fourth and uh, final way that this law can be demonstrated is the law of reflection says that says that which you resist in yourself you will dislike in others it is all about self-love that's a big one when you realize that you dislike a quality in another person point the finger back to yourself and that is a great indication of where you need to develop self-love and acceptance okay <laughs> This does not mean judge yourself. This does not mean be unkind to yourself. But you know what people say, you know, when you point the finger at somebody else, you got three pointing back at you. That is the truth. That wasn't just somebody making up a phrase. We need to, the, the more we love ourselves and the more 
we accept ourselves, um, the less we will see negative things in other people because we will have less negative things in ours. Again, mirror society. And, you know, that to me, that kind of gives me clarity. It helps me figure out what I really want to work on. You know, if somebody really bothers me, then there's something in me that I need to work on. And that to me is a blessing. I really have worked my butt off to not judge myself and to always be kind to myself. It takes practice. All of this stuff that we've been talking about in all of these 26 videos, they take practice. And you can't just snap your finger and change. There's a process, and as long as we practice the law of allowing, we allow the process to happen, okay? So just remember that. I mean, this law of reflection is really, really, it's, it's really great self-reflection, no pun intended, way to go through life. So the truth and the law. There are four more things here I want to talk about before I finish. So, the truth and the law. Number one, your outer world of forms and experience is a reflection of your inner world and thoughts and feelings. Okay, and there is a, a phrase that we in, these, in this uh, transformational world talk about. is as above, so below. As within, so without. That is law. And that is the law of reflection. So, what you see outside is in you, and what is in you, you see outside. And this is where the transformation really, really can be poignant, because if you work on yourself, and you have that self-love, and that self-respect, and that self-acceptance, and you're walking with this fearless, open, compassionate heart then everything you look at in the world is going to be so much nicer and so much more appealing and so much more welcoming. As within, so without. So it's really important. So number two, the greater your awareness of the presence of God within you, the more the presence fills your consciousness. That is law. We are divine beings. We are spiritual beings having a physical existence. It's not the other way around. Okay? We are divine children. Star children. Universe children. Whatever you want to call it. We are divine. We are spiritual. And by being aware of the presence of God within us, the more... His presence will fill your consciousness. And again, the reflections that you see in the world will be much nicer and much more welcoming and much more pleasant and more loving. Number three, the deeper your understanding of spirit as the source, substance, and activity of your supply, the more permanently that truth will be etched into your consciousness. That is the law pretty cool stuff. <laughs> this is really pretty cool stuff. And number four, it is your spiritual consciousness, your knowledge of the presence of God within you as total and complete fulfillment that interprets itself as every form or experience in your world. That is law. So this law is so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. And I really, it's such a great one to kind of close this whole video series with because it kind of puts things in perspective. It really puts things in perspective. So take these things and, you know, go back to the videos if you want to learn. If you have questions, please ask questions. I just, I, you know, I'm here for you. If you want to join my spirituality group, 
Become your best self and transform your life. I'm there all the time. I'm interacting with people. I answer questions all the time. Um, I'm going to be doing like coming in regularly probably twice a week with videos and, you know, once a month contests and, and there's a lot of stuff going on in that group. And, you know, I got four more videos left from this video challenge. And once this video challenge is over, it's like, it's all about the group. So come and join my group. It's going to be a great place. And that's where I am. So if you have any questions, any thoughts, I would love to interact with you. Um, yeah. That's it. That's the video series on the Universal Laws. Um, I'm going to have to think about what to do the next couple of videos. But, um, yeah, so that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I hope you learned a lot. Um, ask me questions. Uh, you know, I am working on this, uh, you know, a, a actual online course about these where we're going to go into depth and we're going to do exercises and and, uh, and and different practices that will help you really assimilate these things. Um, I'll have more information about that in the next month or so. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, just private message me. And before I go, um, I do have one request. I have been talking so much about me and what I do. Please, if you have an, something that you want me to discuss and you want to hear my insights on, please let me know. Comment below the video, and I'll I'll uh, I'll you know do a, one of the videos on it. So I have I think three more. Yeah, 20, 27, 28, 29, 30, like four more videos to go, and uh, I'd love to I'd love to talk about what you are interested in. Um, to kind of close out this 30 day challenge so that's it so have a great night as always be kind to yourself be kind to others and walk in love and light and I will see you tomorrow bye bye